AAIDD has had a long history of um, being the authoritative source in the diagnosis and classification of people with intellectual disabilities. Uh, over the last four years, it's been my pleasure to, to chair what we call the TNC committee. And our charge was to, uh, uh, to do an update of the 1992 and the 2002 manuals. Uh, and we have done that uh, in reference to uh, a, a, a tremendous international effort because there are 18 members of the committee. Uh, those 18 members uh, represent uh, three uh, international bodies plus our own. And over that period of four years, my role really was to coordinate their efforts to uh, organize and really focus on two major activities. Uh, one was we, um, we took a look at and, and spent considerable time on the reviews and critiques have been done of both the 92 and the 2002 manuals. And then secondly, over the course of that four-year period, we uh, published five articles in which we did uh, an update of the literature in the area. Uh, we were able, through those articles, to really consolidate what is the, uh, the best thinking in the world about the condition of intellectual disabilities. And as a result of that, we really have then produced a product that uh, not only clarifies some of the points we made in the 92 and the 2002 manual, but have also given us, I think, uh, increased uh, sophistication uh, in, in the process and, and, and really an increased uh, uh, consistency of the concepts and the terms that we've used over those years. You know, the, the, the field of intellectual disabilities has gone through what we call paradigm shifts. And um, the, the major paradigm shift that has occurred has, has really related to our conception of disability, where we've moved away from defectology uh, to, uh, to really an ecological or social ecological perceptive where, perception where we, we view the individual and the environment and realize it's not just the person, it's the environment that, that really makes the individual. But the other major shift has been in how we view supports and uh, the, the critical role that supports play and to realize that professional services, which historically has been the supports provided to people, is only one kind of support. That the system of supports I mentioned earlier is really where the, the future is. Because a systems of support can involve a lot of things. It can involve policies and practices. It can involve incentives. It can involve uh, prosthetics, cognitive supports, opportunities natural supports, skills and knowledge, et cetera. And so consequently, as we have moved away from a singular focus upon a support to a systems of support, I think we've really broadened the horizon as to why uh, individuals might be interested in, in this whole process. Here are some of the reasons why I think that um, that people should be interested in, in the, uh, the 11th edition uh, that we've really not covered in, in our previous comments. Number one, it, it really does describe why the term intellectual disabilities is a much better term to use. And we spend a lot of time because terminology is very, very critical. Because the term we use to refer to a condition or to a person or to a phenomenon really sets expectations about that person but also communicates clearly what you think about that person. So I think one of the things that we've tried to do is to really address the issue of terminology and why terminology is so very important. Secondly, we've, we've tried to address the issue and I think have done rather well. What are the best practices today uh, in the field of intellectual disabilities? Best practices in terms of diagnosis, best practices in terms of classification, and best practices in terms of, of systems of supports. And in reference to those best practices and systems of supports, one of the things we did is we looked into the human technology, human performance technology literature. And rather than talk about a support for a person, we now talk about a systems of support for the individual, which is the title of, 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 the, of the manual. Third, we, we really attempted to, to involve the international community in that process. It's a very interesting fact that the 10th edition has been translated into 11, uh, 13 languages. And we've already signed contracts with at least five um, countries to translate the 11th. And so consequently, we're not talking about a US-based population. We're really talking about an international community. 
And so consequently, as we viewed the international community, we've really been very sensitive to what are the needs of uh, individuals in both developed and non-developed countries and have tried to tailor our suggestions and recommendations in that regard. And then finally, we, we've added uh, some very rather significant uh, material, we think, in terms of policy and practice. And there's a, a very um, extensive chapter that looks at the impact of the 11th edition on public policy. And for the very first time, we look at what the policy implications are in terms of outcomes for people. So not only are we talking about the diagnostic classification and systems of support system, but we're now looking at personal outcomes for, for both individuals and the families that they are members of.